Thanks, Charlie. Um, well, thank you for coming to uh, my session. I'm going to start off by um, doing something that you probably have experienced. Okay, you get a great lead. They actually even contact you about a website. You schedule a call. You spend like an hour talking to them. They sound like the perfect client. It sounds like the job is just perfect for you. You know how to do everything they want. You're excited about it. You hang up with the thing, okay, thank you very much. I will be sending you a proposal in the next two days. Okay, you're done and now it's, you gotta write the proposal. So what do you do? You check your email. Uh, oh, I, well, I need to do this update for this other client. Let me get this. Well, I need to do this first. So you keep avoiding writing the proposal. You know it's a great job, but you got to write the proposal. That was me probably for the last five years. <laughs> uh, the first five years I was doing this, every, every proposal felt like a mountain to climb. And so if you know me for more than like a day, you're going to figure out that I'm highly logical. I love the Star Trek theme, by the way. Um, I would be Spock. I'm highly logical. I'm highly analytical. Now, that is in total contrast to the fact that I was an art teacher for 18 years. But I was the anal retentive art teacher, so I had the cleanest art room in the county. I had excellent classroom management. So uh, I, love, I love doing the work. I hated writing the proposals. So for me, it was I've got to figure out how to do this so I can automate it. So I can come up with a system to write proposals in less than 30 minutes, and they're going to look great. They're going to stand out. And so I started talking to people. I, I talked to Chris. I mean, we're talking like seven or eight years ago. I, um, the, one of the very first uh, word camp sessions I went to was how to make six figures in, in web design. Um, and he talked about proposals. But nobody could give me a template. I, I need a template. I need somebody to show me how. So I started, that was one of my things. I started collecting templates. Then um, I joined WP Elevation. Uh, for, well, this August, it'll be five years ago. Uh, and what was he giving away? A website proposal template. So that started it, I'm like, great. Then I got a personal coach who had his own website template. So I kind of merged the two, and I'm gonna show you an example of that today. But I started collecting, and I have now, using uh, an online tool, have a proposal set up. I have templates. I do a lot of retirement communities, so I have a retirement community template. I do a boatload of churches, so I have a church template. Um, I have a small business template. And uh, speaking of uh, coaches, mine just walk in, Nathan Ingram in the back. If you need a business coach, please see him this weekend. So I am going to go, I've talked about uh, why? Let's see who I am. Um, I'm the co-owner of Adcock Creative Group. My husband and I uh, started Adcock Creative Group. We actually started two independent businesses. He's a graphic designer, handles mostly print, um, and I do the web part, but we kind of did separate businesses. We both got laid off on the same day. Uh, about eight years ago, we started our own businesses. We've merged and became Adcock Creative Group, and uh, I've been a fr uh, freelancer for over nine years full-time and uh, of course I'm a speaker at a lot of word camps so uh, and I told you the why um, I hate writing proposals it's like one of the things I'd avoid the most um, and then let's talk about the difference between a proposal and a quote a quote is like a menu I'm it's a list of things that you can choose from Here's an invoice, this is what I'm going, it doesn't really, it's just a list, it's like a laundry list. But a proposal is going to pre um, present you as a professional. I know what I'm talking about and this is what I'm going to do for you. These are the benefits of hiring me. And so it, it gives you a lot more space to not only impress the client, but explain your processes, 
what you will do, what you won't do, um, and kind of, you know, cover your rear end on a lot of other things. It presents the value, and that's the big thing about proposals. You want to say, if you hire me, you're going to get this value. Okay, what not to include? Don't use any technical terms. I think I mentioned WordPress twice in my proposal. Um, don't list plugins by name. Don't box yourself in because you might find something better on down the line and they're like, well, I thought we were going to use this. You don't need to listen, list plugins by name. Doesn't mean you can't talk about them down the road, especially if they're premium plugins. Um, don't itemize costs unless you're breaking it down into phases. If you say I'm going to do this, this, this is going to cost you, and they're going to, and you got a penny pincher as a client, they're going to come back and cross things out and say, well, I really don't want you to use gravity forms. I want you to use contact form seven because it's free, you know, and just, they're going to, you get some that nitpick. So avoid that nitpicking by not itemizing. Just say, this is the value I'm going to give you, and here's the price. What to include? This is a long list. Okay, um, don't worry, there's a link to the slides at the end. Um, a business snapshot. What a business snapshot is, I listened to you when you told me about your business. So you're, you're actually going back and telling them what they told you. We are a full service retirement community. We handle independent living all the way to skilled nursing and memory care. We have everything in between. We have um, cottages, we have apartments all the way from one bedroom to three bedroom apartments, and we have all these amenities. So um, you're actually just telling them what they told you. You go to their old website, you look up, up things about them, and you actually just say, hey, this is your business, and this is what we're going to do for you. And business needs and target audience needs. These are questions you ask when you talk to your client. Why do you need a new website? What are you looking to improve on your current website? What are features your current website do doesn't have and that you want to have? What are things that you have that you want to get rid of? Who's your target audience? Tell me about the demographics. You know, are they middle-aged men who like to hunt and fish? Are, are they, you know, millennials or Generation X? You know, you've got to ask about that demographic so you know the design of the website's going to match that demographic. The scope of work. You know, I know this is a no-brainer. You're going to write exact uh, line items. This is what I'm going to do. Not how you're going to do it, but this is what I'm going to do. It's going to have an email opt-in form, you know, it's going to have a social media stack. You're going to be able to like them on social media or follow them on social media, but you're also going to be able to share it on social media. You're going to list everything down, and I'm going to show you an example of that. Um, investment. Notice I didn't say price because they're in making an investment in their website. It's a financial investment, so that's what I call it. And here are the pricing options. So uh, I'll show you an example of that. Your process, you know, I don't hide that. Okay, first we do design. I know this is real basic, but first we do design. And then we do development. And then we do launch. And here's the approximate time it takes. Notice we have the design, but we can't do any work until we have your content. <laughs> so no, no code before content. So. We have to have your content at this point. That's actually in my face. If we don't have your content, the project's going to stall here until we do. And then we go into development and then we launch. And then we do the post launch. So, um, and contract. I actually have my contract included in my proposal. Now some people send them separate. I think, I like my clients to see all the small print at the same time. And I, you can put it in a separate document and send it at the same time. Okay, here's the key. Let the client write it. If you know what your proposal needs to include, you know what questions to ask. So I just ask them all the questions that I need to fill in the blank 
on the proposal. So I have a list of questions, like I have a, a church list. I have a retirement community list. If I've done more than two questions in, or uh, two websites in a um, specific vertical market, like insurance, I have an insurance website thing, because I've done three. So I actually have a list of things that I ask people who want an insurance website. So I just save those questions, pull them back out. I actually, on my website, have a website worksheet, courtesy of WP Elevation. And I actually have people I've never heard of fill out that website worksheet all about their company and contact me, then I schedule. Shocks me every time I get one, but you know, oh, I heard from you, about you from someone else and I want you to do my website. So it actually asks all the questions that I would ask them if I was talking to them on the phone. Tell me about your target audience. Tell me about your business needs. Um, and you're welcome to go to my website and look at it and tweak it, make it your own. I just have it up there. I don't force my clients to go and fill it out. I'd much rather have that phone conversation. Um, I don't write a proposal if I don't have a chance to get the project. I used to be afraid to talk money. You know, you know what's your budget? You know, well, how much do you think you're willing to spend? I used to say that to the very last after I've spent an hour on the phone. It's like the third question I ask. You know, what's your budget for this project? And if it's, if they say, you know, I want, it's $500, I'm not going to say, well, I'm not going to do it for that. I'm going to, well, let's continue talking. And then I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you that my base website starts between four and $6,000. Now, let's talk. And let's find out your needs, and then I'm going to point you in the right direction. Usually by the time I finish talking to them about what they would get for that money, and I'm talking to them about their business and what their desires and goals are, nine times out of ten, I'm going to send them a proposal and they're going to sign it. Because they're going to realize they, don't, they probably have unrealistic expectations. If they really don't have the money, then I'm going to say, well, you know, maybe Squarespace and Wix are the best for you for right now. But when you're ready to grow your community, you're re ready to really take advantage of having a fully functional website, then you can come back to me in a couple years when you have a larger budget. And I've actually had that happen. So, okay. Here's um, the proposal. I already talked about that, but I'm going to talk about actually all the the steps in my proposal. Um, I have the business snapshot, the business needs, the audience needs, I have the solution, I call it a solution, scope of work, my investment, my agreement, and then the next step where they can sign and uh, go on with the project. So um, let's go back. I'm going to show you an example here. So let me escape this and go to uh, my template. Now I use Better Proposals and I was using BidSketch. It was like $30 a month at the time uh, I was using it and uh, AppSumo, if you don't know about at AppSumo, AppSumo.com, go there, sign up, get their emails. Um, they had a lifetime deal for Better Proposals for $39. I can send like 30 or 50 proposals a month like you know, that's not going to ever happen. So, um, <laughs> at least not the way I, I'm set up right now. So, I got a lifetime deal, so, you know, I don't have to pay a monthly fee. But there's gr other great ones out there, and I'll talk about uh, some of those tools in a minute. But I'm going to show you a sample proposal. This is actually the one I use um, for my retirement communities. And what I did is I put name of community in bold and um, I have to tweak it for each community, but I have this, the business snapshot, which talks about their community. Um, they need an updated website that functions as a powerful marketing communications tool to attack new residents, position the website as a go-to source of information, and position name of community as an upscale option in the senior living market. And then I actually have the business and target audience needs. And these, this is the bullet list of the things that they don't have on their current website. 
and the things they told me that they wanted on the phone. Um, they needed an event system. Uh, and this one, they actually needed, they did no basic SEO. They, their, web, their current website was on GoDaddy Site Builder. So there's like no SEO. Um, there's, they haven't done anything. Uh, they haven't done any blogging, uh, but they want to. They don't have floor plans because they don't know how to upload them. Uh, there was, uh, um, they wanted to do online donations. There was a bunch of things that they didn't have that they wanted. They knew they needed an SSL certificate. And then who's their target audience? Well, with like retirement communities, you have a weird target audience. First, you have the usually 75 years old and older are the people that like put themselves in retirement communities. They don't start thinking about it until like at the last minute. Then you have their kids that are, you know, in their 40s, maybe 50s. Um, who are looking for a place for mom and dad, or you may even have their grandkids who are taking care of them and looking for a place. So you have a wide gamut, so you actually do all the marketing. You use direct mail, you use newspaper ads, you use all this other stuff. And uh, um, so I put that actually in the target audience needs. And this is the weird one, let me go over here. And then the solution. This is what I'm going, the scope of work. This is everything I'm going to do for you. I'm going to um, do a custom design, mobile friendly. I'm going to reorganize your, um, they're not all going to be at the root. We're going to actually do a content silo. We're going to do um, a page builder. We're going to do social media. We're going to do email sign up and on and on and on and on. Basic search engine optimization. Now, First of all, most people have never heard of search engine optimization, so I put basic. And then I actually, at the bottom, I explain to them when I go over this with them on the phone, what basic search engine optimization is. That means we're gonna optimize your page, that's every page, for search engines so we can customize what shows in Google and everything. It does not mean it's competitive search engine optimization. We are not doing ads. We are not going to make you rank number one for um, assisted living. Okay, that's competitive search engine optimization. That's advanced search engine optimization, not included. So I don't want them to get the misunderstanding that they're going to be number one on Google when they get a new website. Um, I also offer hosting. I try to get my clients on my hosting um, simply because it's an environment I can control and make sure everything's working correctly. My project timeline, design, development, revisions, testing, and then launch, and then uh, the investment. You know, what is the investment? And then I put in the options. I put in the options for hosting. I put in the options for website care plans. I want to take care of their website when it's, when it's launched. So I talk to them about the different options in the care plans. Do you want to Basic, $99 a month, that I just handle the security, the backups, and some minor updates. Do you want me to do more than that at $2.99 a month? Do you want concierge priority care starting at $4.99 a month? So um, I explain the differences. I actually even have it in my contract, which is my um, master services agreement. Now I put all these little headings in the slides so you have it, but uh, this is kind of a, the legal thing. I am not a lawyer, I don't play one on TV, so you should have a lawyer look at it. The best way to do that, write something up and take it to them and have them tweak it. Find somebody who's good with uh, digital businesses. I talk about the services, the time frames. Here's time frames. If you don't give me content, I can't build your, web, build your website. So if you want us to write the content, then we'll include that in the time frame. But uh, when people say, you know, they give you the money and then they disappear for a month and come back and ask where the website is, and you're like, well, where's the content? Uh, here's something um, I got from Nathan, suspended and abandoned projects. You do a project, the client disappears for about six months, then they come back, they're gung-ho, they want to get the website launched in a week, you make the final t 
tweaks that they want, boom, and then they vanish again. So I actually have a suspended. If I don't hear from you in 30 days, I mean crickets, nothing. I don't hear anything from you. The project is suspended. We're going to pick it back up. You're going to pay the second half before I start working. Because I'm going to make sure I'm going to get the money for this project because you just showed me what kind of uh, client you probably are. Abandoned projects. You don't hear from them in 120 days, 90 days, whatever number it is. Projects done, dead. If they come back to you, it's a new proposal because we're starting from scratch again. Um, fees and payments. How are they going to pay you? 30%, 30%, you know, 33, 33, 34, 50, 50. You write it up, let them know. Um, currently, our hourly rate. Um, it's not listed here, but it says, hey, I did this website for you four years ago when I was charging $100 an hour, and you want me to do some hourly work now, well, it's going to be the current hourly rate, not what you had um, four years ago. Um, what's your late payment? Oh, your check bounced, things like that. Um, termination. You can fire clients. It's okay. I've done it. Um, refunds. If you don't have a refund policy, that's the number one thing I assign for you to do. Do you really want to do a bunch of work and then give them the, their deposit back? No. So if they decide to go with somewhere else, um, you have a no refund policy. I actually discover my, uh, what my design process is, what my development process is, what, what constitute revisions. Revisions isn't, oh, by the way, I want a WooCommerce store. That's not a revision. Okay, um, what launch is? Okay, this one actually came up yesterday. Compatibility. Our websites are designed for modern browsers. If you are using Internet Explorer 10, I can't guarantee that it's going to work for that. It's not built for that. So I actually got that question from a client. Hey, this isn't working in Internet Explorer. <laughs> I'm like, Internet Explorer? Um, can you tell me what version it is, by the way? Oh, they're using Internet Explorer 10. I said, is it on Windows XP? Oh, how'd you know? <laughs> I'm like, OK. Well, it's probably never going to work on that. Um, here's the directions. Go to Chrome and download Chrome. Uh, and see, hope that it works on that. And the next thing is, you know, upgrade your computer. Uh, and then changes after launch. That's tweaks. What's covered? It's not, oh, by the way, I need a business directory on my website. That is not included. And uh, use of third party images and photography. Second most important thing to have in your contract. I actually ask my clients, where did you get this picture? And, well, I Googled it, I, but I Googled copyright free. And it was on the, I'm like, no, we're not going to use that. I, I actually include stock photography in my designs. Um, I have a subscription to iStock, and I buy the credits for deposit photos. So I include those. Some people charge them extra, like $10 extra for every stock image. But I don't want that information coming back. I don't want my clients getting nailed by Getty Images because they, they snipe something off of Google. And so um, this is something I actually got from Nathan. Uh, terms of use and other legal pages. We're, we should have, every website should have a privacy policy. Should have, a, if it's got an e-commerce store, should have a terms and conditions. Who's responsible for writing that? I put on there, I will do a basic one for you. And I will email the text to you. It's up to you to go to your, um, legal advisor and make sure that that covers your business. Um, who owns what? I mean, WordPress is open source. They've got to understand that they can use, this website design is for this website. They can't package it up and sell it for some, something else. Plug in licenses and updates. If you're on a care plan with me, I cover premium plugins. If you decide not to be on the care plan with me, I'll cover that plugin for one year. I set a note on my calendar, and then it's not covered anymore. They have to buy their own, and I actually 
have an email, I send them, oh, by the way, you're not on a care plan, it's your responsibility to get a new license for this. Website security. Who's responsible if something happens to the website? If I'm, they're not on a care plan, you know, it's their responsibility. Talk a little bit about my hosting, um, that I'm not responsible if they go with the, you know, Bob's hosting. I actually have some clients who, when I first got them, they were on the local computer repair places web hosting, you know, and it didn't even have the GDR library installed. So, you know, you're trying to do WordPress on something that can't run WordPress. Website updates and backups. You know, I set up some automated backups for them uh, just so I can make sure I at least have a copy of the website, um, but it's up to them. Uh, website care plans, I talk about that. Uh, here's my packages, and then payments for care plans. If you want to, I have a few clients because of their internal billing have to do checks. I don't mind checks, I don't have to pay credit card fees, but if you're going to do checks, I bill quarterly for that. So I don't want to be responsible for sending you an invoice every month. It's just not something I want to do. I don't want these little checks coming in. So if you're going to do a check, we do it quarterly. Nobody seems to have a problem with that. Um, most of the time, we just set it up with a credit card. Uh, Third-party services. I do a lot of churches. Third-party services, online giving, um, live streaming. You know, we're going to make it work the best we can, but there's, you know, the limitations are usually on that third-party system. Email deliverability. I use Mailgun. I set up, a, I work with them. We set up a Mailgun, a free Mailgun account. We connect every web, website, do that with Mailgun, so we don't have an issue with mail deliverability. So when I get a client that says, hey, you know, someone said they sent me a form uh, yesterday at 9.30, this happened, uh, and I didn't get it. So I go, I log into Mailgun and I look at it and I said, well, you opened it at 9.30, 9.32 um, on your computer. I did? Oh, here it is. I accidentally put it in the trash. So I love the logs on Mailgun. So I can actually uh, say, hey, you know, it did go. Um, disclosure, domain names. Um, hey, if you don't pay your domain registration, it's not my fault that your domain lapsed. I've had that happen before. So I actually, when I do the DNS, I look and see when it expires. <laughs> And I actually put a note in my calendar for my client. You know, their domain is expiring. Send them an email. Make sure that they're um, going to pay the bill. Because I had a client who confused web hosting with GoDaddy and domain renewal. And so I just wanted to make sure that didn't happen. And uh, they're like, do I pay this? And I'm like, well, what does it say? Domain renewal. Uh, yeah, you pay that. Um, marking an attribution link. Um, indemnification, you know, what are you responsible for if something horribly goes wrong? Um, choice of law and forum. If you, your client in Nevada decides to sue you for some bizarre reason, um, do you really want to have to go out to Nevada? No, they have to come to Georgia. Or they have to come to North Carolina to deal with that. So, um, disclaimers, uh, this is all, you know, legal stuff. Um, and then, this is stuff that lawyers will add. And then I have my next steps. And they just go ahead, they sign it. Um, Better Proposals has the option that you can, they can actually pay right then. You can turn that on and off as needed. Um, if I have a client say, we'll send you a deposit check, I turn it off. But others, they'll just say, I want to pay by credit card. Um, I want to get Sky Miles for it, so I'm going to pay for credit card and I just turn that feature on and they sign it. The neat thing about like BidSketch, Proposify, Better Proposals is every time the client opens the proposal, you get an email. You get to see how much time they spend on each page. So if they spent, you know, approximately five seconds on the contract, I know that when I talk to them over the phone that I'm going to say, now I noticed you didn't spend a lot of time reading the contract. Let's kind of got a brief overview of what it says so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Um, so let me go down here and bring that back. There we go. And that's kind of 
That's why I put this in here because that way you'll have an example of what's in the proposal. And this is all the main points in the contract that we just went over. The notice I put first, have your lawyer look at it. Uh, time frames, suspended and abandoned projects, all that that we just went over. So now you have a nice list because you can download these slides. Um, to tools for proposals. Hey, if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of margin to work with, use Word or Pages. Take an example and just build it in Word or Pages. Pages. I use Better Proposals and there's an affiliate link. I hardly ever do that, but I put that there. Bid Sketch is nice. Between the two, they're very similar, but I found Better Proposals easier to customize. Um, Proposify, I just saw a proposal. I'm working with another web design web designer and we're doing a big project together and she did hers in Proposify. She did the proposal. It was gorgeous. So Proposify is another one and I've seen that on AppSumo as deals as well. Um, 17 Hats. 17 Hats is kind of an all-in-one solution. Payment, emails, a whole bunch of automation. Now they're kind of pricey. They just had a sale a couple weeks ago, but Put, it, put a note in your calendar to look at it around Black Friday. Go sign up for their email list. Black, they have an awesome Black Friday sale every year. Um, Plutio is one, that was another AppSumo deal. Um, it was a project management tool, but they've added proposals to it. I got that on um, AppSumo and I've been waiting. It's kind of like Trello meets better proposals meets Asana kind of thing. It's a kind of, he keeps adding features. Uh, and he added a proposal feature and they just, they're in beta right now. This is what I've been waiting on. It's gonna connect to Zapier. So I can actually connect it to everything else. Right now it's kind of standalone. So uh, I'll probably move over to it from Trello uh, once uh, Zapier's integrated. Um, and then, Guide the client. Go over, offer to go over the proposal. If, if you're in a different time zone, then record a video and talk your way through the proposal and send it to them. Um, and you get the deposit before you do any work. No matter how excited you are to do it, always get the deposit first. Because what if they get, well, we decided to go with my cousin's nephew's neighbor to do it because he can do it for you know $75. So I'm not going to do any work until I have the deposit. Um, now, stop stressing <laughs> and go write proposals. So reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm at MGA Creative. I'm Melanie at adcockcreativegroup.com. Reach out to me if you would like me to look at your proposal, help you. I'll be glad to. Um, and or if you'd like me to send you uh, a link. And uh, so here's the resources. So you can take a picture of that and get to it. Um, WP Elevation, they have their proposal templates for free. Uh, Advanced Coaching, that's Nathan Ingram, who was just in here. Uh, Adcock Creative uh, Group, that's, my, that's the link to a sample right there. Adcock Creative Group forward slash proposal. Contact me, Melanie at adcockcreativegroup.com, and the slides are at that link. So please ask questions. Yes, sir. What do you do when a client wants you to sign their master service agreement and they're not willing to sign your huh. Have a nice day. Yeah. Um, If they're not going to sign mine, not, I'm not going to sign theirs. And if I'm looking at theirs, I'm going to definitely take it to my lawyer and have them look at it in reference to mine. No amount of trouble. <laughs> yeah, that just has like red flags all over it. Yes. State what you just said. She asked, um, now say that again. I want to make sure I got it. If we provide a service where it's fee-for-service, but 
fee for service, we bill the patient's insurance. We don't. We wouldn't be billing the office. Should we include financial or uh, in the proposal, or just leave that part? Yeah. If you're if you're doing any extra service that's not covered by what you're doing, um, and it's an extra fee for service, you need to put that in there as uh, um, kind of almost an additional section. And I'd even highlight it and, and make sure that I talk to them about it and so they understood that if it's an additional fee for service that you're, you're, you know, all the billing is going to go to the insurance company, you need to put that in there. Better safe than sorry, always. Anything else? Thank you very much.